Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and it seems to many of us that iOS has been losing its dependability, stability, and reliability over the past couple versions or years of iOS. Many have said that Android is more stable, including myself at certain times. Others have actually said that iOS now lacks consistency and is not quite the gem it once was. I thought we'd take a look back at the same point in time last year and see if the journey of iOS 16 was better than that of iOS 17 or not. I've been doing follow-up videos for iOS for many, many years, and I've maintained a mountain of notes every week with issues, fixes, and features. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now we're currently on iOS 17.3 betas. We were at the same point last year with iOS 16.3 betas and the current public version, at least at the time of this video is iOS 17.2.1. Like I said, I've tested each one of them, done YouTube community polls to see what you had to say about them. And typically some of them were good. Some weren't some fixed issues. Some didn't. And here's what I had to say about iOS 16.3 last year after it released to the public with the weekend follow-up right at that time, I said the iOS 16.3 experience continues to struggle and get worse for many. Apple lately has been plagued with bugs in their software, but I'm remaining confident that they can fix these issues with future updates. Remember everyone at Apple is also using these versions and experiencing issues themselves. Now iOS 16.3 brought a bunch of different features like we get with major updates every year. We got security keys for Apple ID. We got some new unity wallpapers. So within our wallpaper here under unity, we had some different styles that they added. We also got updates for HomePod second gen support. HomePod was updated with temperature and humidity measurements, even though it had the sensor, they just didn't activate it. And also advanced data protection was rolled out around the world. It was still available in the U S but they hadn't rolled it out yet. Also changes to emergency SOS and how you activate it. Now, when I did the weekend follow-up after those releases, I actually looked at what you had to say, the bugs I had, and it seems Bluetooth seemed to be getting worse for me. I was having issues with connectivity with AirPods and the phone was sort of slowing down badly over a week or so. I'd have to restart it to get the speed back and it was a public release, not a beta. So we actually had massive slowdowns. We don't see that currently, at least I haven't. And many of you haven't seen that. So that's a good improvement this year and performance was good right away. But like I said, it degraded shortcuts in particular seemed to be slow and the phone rapidly made it seem like there was maybe a memory leak where things would just slow down over time and it needed a weekly reset. iOS 16.2 also had about three or four bugs where there was swipe home lag. So maybe you were in an app like music, you'd swipe home, it would lag, or maybe you'd swipe it up into the dynamic Island and it would stutter badly. There was lag in games for many people and Wi-Fi kept saying I had no connection when I was in YouTube. So that's something we had seen. And also VPN had issues. Nord VPN wouldn't connect. Many others wouldn't connect. So still some issues there. Also, we had AirPod case battery bugs. So if you had an AirPods case, it wouldn't give the right battery reading. And there was just some odd issues from time to time with that. There was also a camera bug on iPhone 14 pro and pro max. However, iOS 16.2 brought things such as Apple music, sing the new music app animations, updated menu options, free form was added. So they finally added free form that they promised last time. And they also added things such as 5g for India updates to accessibility, new widgets, airdrop defaulting to 10 minutes, which was a bit controversial. So when you go into settings, it still hasn't changed back. And I've been critical of that where it's just defaulting to everyone for 10 minutes or we'll switch back to that. I really don't like that at all. I would like to be able to have it on, but you have it default for 10 minutes and then it switches off to contacts only. There was many more features as well. Finally with iOS 16.1, again, it had swipe bugs and stutter music would freeze and stop playing when you were connected to CarPlay or just driving in general, you'd play the music and then it would just pause on its own. So it'd be playing, then it would just stop for some reason. Also, if you were using headphones or CarPlay, sometimes the Bluetooth wouldn't sync properly. So if you were maybe watching a video on YouTube with AirPods, the video could be out of sync. 
iOS 16.1 did bring quite a few things, things we forgot about, such as the battery percentage to things such as the iPhone 10R, 11, 12 mini, and 13 mini, where they had it on other phones, but not those phones right off the bat. It also brought the clean energy charging update. So that's something I'm not sure how many people use it, but in battery health and charging, we have clean energy charging. It also brought things such as iCloud shared photo library, live activities for third-party apps, copy and paste prompt fix, and also updates to Fitness Plus, Wallet, Home with Matter, and more. So with each one of those updates in iOS 16, it seemed that there were some pretty major bugs with swiping home, music freezing, all sorts of issues with Wi-Fi. We still have some Wi-Fi bugs. We also still have that notification bug. So that's something that keeps popping in and out from time to time. And we still have random bugs, but we don't have the slowdowns, it seems, for most people. If we take a look at iOS 17.1 this year, again, we had some bugs. The iPhone would shut off sometimes on its own at night. Sometimes your alarms wouldn't work at all. Also, there was an issue with display flickering on the Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2, so that kind of went along with this, and the notification bug, of course, is still there. With that update, we gained new text tones and ringtones, updates to favorites and musics, not the favorite playlist, but favorites in general, also airdrop over the internet, new standby options, new wallpapers, podcasts, action button updates, and many more iOS 17.2 again had three different problems that seemed to be consistent where it wasn't charging sometimes in GM cars. We also had some things fixed, of course, with BMW cars where it actually fixed those issues, but it was not charging in GM cars now. There were charging issues in general for some where you'd have to reboot in order for it to charge in general, and a few say performance was an issue at the time. It wasn't slowing down like iOS 16, but it was getting slow sometimes for some people iOS 17.2 actually brought camera improvements to iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max with focusing. We gained that journal app that many people had been waiting for. So the journal app that we have here was finally released. We gained some live wallpaper back. So in our wallpaper, if we go into that, we go in and add one. We gained our live wallpaper back that we had before, although we didn't get all of them that we wanted, but at least we got some of them. And then also we had things such as the music favorites playlist, translate to the action, was added to the action button. We got spatial video, new widgets, Siri, weather, and more. So lots of different updates from both years, but again, we had some issues with them. However, it seems if we look back, iOS 16 actually had a few more issues that were more serious than iOS 17. But I think at this point, we've just had years and years of issues, so it was a problem. However, when it comes to battery life, I think most people would agree that it seems iOS 16, despite it having some battery issues, battery life in general seemed to be a little bit better. Nowadays, I'm getting through a day with about 40% left at the end of the day, before that, I was getting through the day with 50 or 60% on iOS 16, despite having a newer iPhone 15 Pro Max with year before phones, or even if you had something older like an iPhone 10, it seemed battery life was more efficient on iOS 16 for some reason. As they add features, of course, they use more power, but that's hopefully something they'll fix in the future. We did have the issue with iOS 16 really degrading battery health more quickly, it seemed, because it just wasn't as efficient before, but it didn't seem to improve much with iOS 17 at this point in time. It would seem that each version of iOS, since iOS 16, even before with iOS 15, there were three major issues people experienced with each version that they released. So they would change from slowdowns, things such as stuttering, maybe crashes, and much more, but it seems iOS 17 at least has less serious issues, at least looking back through those three major versions. As far as iOS 18 is concerned, we're expecting some sort of redesign or at least some overhaul where it's going to be an ambitious update, according to Mark Gurman. We've seen some changes to the interface with things such as the action button on the 15 Pro Max. This looks absolutely nothing like anything else throughout the whole entire OS, and it makes sense that maybe they're updating it with something and just sort of preemptively showing us this, getting ready for the next version. I would welcome a big update. I think many of us would, as we haven't had one in many, many years. And I think that's hopefully what's next. We know we'll get some AI features and Siri and much more. However, as far as if iOS 17 is better than iOS 16, I would say at this point it actually is with the exception of maybe battery life. It seems to be more stable, even though we're a little bit disappointed with features and issues. 
but we had a lot of issues with iPhone 15 when it initially launched. We had heat issues that Apple acknowledged. We had issues with charging. We had all sorts of little weird things, mostly heat related, but all sorts of odd things that people don't normally experience on a severity that we get with a new iPhone. So, or with the launch of a new iPhone. So that severity maybe sort of dampened some of our viewpoints on iOS 17. Now I've talked about iOS 18 and what it should bring in the future. Apple already has some features coming soon. I have a separate video for that, but I think a lot of people probably agree they want stability most and then maybe some new features and a redesign most. That's what I think many of us would like to see is Apple focus on stability. It seems that even with the latest beta release of iOS 17.3 beta two, it was a sloppy release where it was causing some people's phones to go into a boot loop where you had to use iTunes or a Mac with finder to restore it. That's a bit of an issue, of course, for anyone that experienced that, especially if it was on their main device. So iOS updates, of course, that's a beta and can be excused a little bit as it was only a developer beta and not a public beta, but either way, it seems like things are getting worse as Apple is focusing on different things such as Apple vision pro. Hopefully iOS 18 completely turns that on its head and really repairs things as my statement that I said at the beginning of this video, where I were, I was confident that they could actually fix these issues with future updates. I'm not as confident as I once was, as it seems they're very focused on something else at this point. So maybe we'll see a big update with iOS 18 to fix those issues. But at this point in time, I would say iOS 17 is better but not better in all ways. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And this was just sort of a look back at what things were actually like, what they're like now. And hopefully that helped you remember some of those different issues you were having before that they've been resolved. If there's anything else you'd like me to cover or take a look back at, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I always do. This is the same wallpaper on the left as it is on the right. It's just sort of zoomed in. So be sure to check it out and set it however you'd like. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.